war by another name. With the rapid strikes and seizures of Iraqi territory by the Islamic State, commonly known as ISIS, the West, given a splendid pretext by the horrific decapitations of two journalists, is mounting a counterattack, if only by air. So far, no Western state has yet announced the deployment of ground troops. Why are they there? They claim that ISIS is a threat to their homelands, surely a stretch by any honest measure. For ISIS has, according to most accounts, 20,000 troops, at best, according to some sources, 10,000. According to the International Institute for Strategic Studies, Iraq has 247,000 active troops, well over 20 times ISIS's troop strength. ISIS has no air force, nor navy, nor tanks, except those left behind in Iraqi bases by their fleeing troops. How then is ISIS an imminent threat to the U.S., not to mention the West? They have an aggressive and able armed force. But how could they rouse Iraqi troops so easily, unless Iraqis had little to fight for in the first place? Truth is, it's hard to fight for a puppet. And although former Prime Minister Nouri Kamel al-Maliki is no longer in power, a U.S. puppet still runs Iraq. The real reason U.S. troops withdrew from Iraq had nothing to do with the Iraqi people. It withdrew because al-Maliki refused to sign a so-called status of force agreement, a pact granting U.S. troops total immunity for any action committed on Iraqi lands. Any action? The idea is breathtaking. Even a puppet couldn't bear it. And now, to protect their puppet state, the U.S. bombs Iraqi targets described as ISIS hotspots. But bombs are weapons of war, not tools of peace. Call it what you will, it's still war. From Imprisoned Nation, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle, all for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today because we got a family reunion. Family reunion on the arena. So with that being said, I want to start to my right, introduce the lovely, the lovely yes. Miss Mary. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. All right, all right. And to her right, we got King. Uh-oh, look out, servant. Servant alert. Listen here, get <laughs> All this slave talk that you bring to the show. <laughs> we got the intro. Oh, <laughs> slave. Oh, that's slave. <laughs> I'm going to give you gavel credit. Okay. <laughs> and to his right, we got Vincent Cheeks. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm sitting up here introduce everybody introduce yourselves. We, yeah. we a council here. Yeah. To his right. Yanga. <laughs> Yanga. Yeah. How are you gonna get to me? Man. And then I don't get no help. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna leave you out now. No, 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 you're no, under the bus. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> man, they know me. If they don't know me by now, man, they haven't been watching. They will never, never, they will never right. know. Exactly. Well, no, no, exactly. Yanga. 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 Head chairman of Atlanta chapter. Um, black nationalists, parents. Yeah, no of doubt, no doubt. Two black nationalists. Two black nationalists, no doubt. Father was the chairman of the Panther Party before me, so it's just a legacy. Yeah. Just doing, I think, revolutionary, freedom fighter, yeah. all around activist, and not just a community -made activist, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. Certified nationalists. Certified, Certified nationalists. Revolutionary black hey. nationalists. So you got to brag because you legacy now? Yeah, man. Oh, legacy, yeah. man. <laughs> legacy, hey, man. And he's a rapper. Legacy. And he's yeah. right. a right. 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 rapper, speaker, you know, exactly. talk show right. host right. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 Activist, you know, right. Yes. Uh, I, again, Brother Vince here, actor, activist, with a quick announcement. Yes, sir. Uh, two quick announcements. First, Join us tonight at Silly Sundays, 886 Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, Silly Sundays with T. Ray Sanders is the host, uh, 886 Martin Luther King Boulevard. So if you want to laugh, go check them out tonight. And again, uh, as I've been announcing before, the month of October, we say no more. No more to mass incarceration of black and brown men. No more uh, police brutality. So with that, uh, during the month of October, we have a few events. The first event, October 5th, we're asking for local community pastors 
to incorporate uh, mass incarceration into their sermons for that week. Uh, October 11th, uh, we will be having a concert and a panel, concert featuring Jasiri X. Uh, hopefully, Dead Prayers will be there also. Right. That will be October 11th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. October 22nd, we're having a rally at Woodrow Park at 4 p.m. The rally may lead into a march to the Capitol, so y'all come out and join us for that. And on October 30th, we're asking everyone to wear orange in protest of mass incarceration and police brutality. Mm. Thank you very much. And with that, over to Brother Black Sun, we're going right. to get into the meat of the show. And I want to address something last week before we get started. You know, Thrasher and I, we got into this discussion about can convicted felons vote, and we had Andrew Hunt on there. If you are off paper, mm -hmm. I don't care what crime you committed, exactly. you are allowed to vote. So, Dr. Thrasher... Define what off paper means. Off paper oh. means off probation, probation. Okay. off parole, all fines being paid. So if you are okay. a Negro yeah. up there at the poll, and you can't vote, that is a form of voter suppression, and that is illegal. We're not going to spread that illegal legality on the arena. Right on. Did we do Bye. a disclaimer? Oh, I'm sorry. Please, <laughs> Please do a disclaimer. <laughs> the views and opinions of that <laughs> of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or affiliates. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Right. Yes, sir. Ooh. All right. Let's okay. get to the topic. See, we have to do it facts on this. So we got, you know, we got a research. We got. Mm -hmm. we, we don't deal with just just hearsay. Right Spirituality. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. We don't deal with the slave <laughs> language in the video. Yes, we sir. don't deal with that. Yes, sir. Now, but you know what? We're going to give you a pack because you an elder. Yes, sir. Not you right. was an elder, Gideon. Okay, okay. All right. Speaking of elders, why is it that the African Americans are the only people that let the elders be running all these organizations? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, in America today, uh, our children do not give their respect to the elders that you, young men, have afforded me on this particular program. It is not consistent with the generation that we're in. If, in fact, we gave more respect to the elders and the elders would then respect the children that they bring in, we'd be able to pass the torch and mentor and develop a more uh, consistent, yeah. cohesive level of uh, uh, bringing on the old as we, bringing out the old as we bring in the new. Let me tell you something, Nick Indian. Yes, sir. We as black nationals, we're going to take the mantle, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why we took the mantle of Malcolm <coughs> X. That's where we're forming cases here. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X said register. Yes, so sir. it's on paper because as far as when you say, oh, the system doesn't work, that's a belief. It is nowhere on paper. So once we get it on paper, we have a case. Well, get down. We, yeah. we know that the system doesn't work. No, and it's but on paper. where's your proof, Gideon? Uh, Corey Ward, Kenneth Walker, Catherine Johnson. Let's get started with Catherine. the show. Okay, there go ahead. ahead. Yeah. All right, go ahead. There's no proof there. <laughs> That's your belief. Y'all on the whole oh, I know. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Yes. Let me, I'm sorry. Let's get on the ISIS topic. I'm just going to let Gideon. Look at you, that man, too. I miss being on the arena. Yes, <laughs> All right, <laughs> ISIS. ISIS. Mm -hmm. Crisis. ISIS crisis. ISIL. ISIL. You know, I always look at an organization, and I always look at the origin. Mm -hmm. I look at the funding. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, John McCain. Uh-oh. John McCain. Mm -hmm. Taking pictures with, uh, what's his name? What's Abu things? Bakar al-Baghdadi. Hey, give us the facts here. Give us the facts. Oh, man. Well, there's a few pictures circulating on, circulating on the internet of John McCain having taken photos with the leader of ISIS, whom we know as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Mm. Um, that's a pretty big indictment on John McCain because just over the past two or three weeks, he's been on national television. I've seen him on Fox. I've seen him on CNN. Yes, I've seen him on several news stations demanding for strong and swift action against ISIS. Really? He basically said uh, last week that we need to take them out, mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. But then mm -hmm. you have John Soltz, chairman of VoteVets.org, that asserts that John McCain has been quite the hypocrite, mm. being that he's demanding this swift, hard action on ISIS, but yet he was posing with pictures with them <laughs> just last March of 2013 him. over in Syria. Right. Come on now. 
And so now, uh, and they and they killed him. I just just want to throw that side note in with Abu Bakr al al Baghdadi. That's like, you know, that's a nickname, right? Mm. That's what they call a kunya. That's not even his name. That's a nickname. Oh, okay. so that's an alibi. Or that's, it, what something like that. that. That's like saying that's like putting a warning post up saying you're looking for June bug. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Abu Bakr, uh, uh, the, the Abu Bakr was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad. Anybody with like good character or that's, that has those characters like Abu Bakr that is charitable, this and that, they call him Abu Bakr. Mm -hmm. And Al Baghdadi means the Baghdadi means he's from Baghdad. Mm. So that's all they're saying. It's like Abu Bakr from Baghdad. That ain't even his real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, Thank basically, you for translating, I'm just, you know, I just, just wanted us to translate. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me Yanga, they done put John McCain of a person who ain't giving out false information? I mean, I don't know if it's false, but that's like a nickname. It's like I said, that's like Obama taking a picture with Junebug from 105th Street. Right. It's, it's the equivalent of that. It's not a name. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's not a, a name, in, especially when you're dealing with um, Islamic culture. Or this and that is not like... My name is Ibrahim Ibn Abdul Kaha Ibn Ben Simmons. So you tell a lineage, you know what I'm saying? My father, who right. my father is, mm -hmm. who his father is, this and that. But my cunha was, my first, my daughter name is Fatima. My, my, my nickname was Abu Fatima, meaning the father of Fatima. Okay. Exactly. So Abu Bakr is a Bakr, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, it's like a camel. So they're saying the father of a camel, my boy from Baghdad. Mm. Oh. So I, that's not even a real name. You know, it, it makes you question if a lot of these people are even real people. But by us being a Western people and not really understanding the language. Islamic culture and, and, and stuff like that, when they come in and start throwing out all these kunyas, all these nicknames, we'll just sit there and look and think that that's some real, you know. Well, mm. Let me ask Mary a question. Mm -hmm. Mary, you know you got ISIS talking about they're the Islamic State. Is it a real, real organization? Or maybe what, what? My question is, what do they want? Yeah. I mean, definitely, I think nobody knows. I think no common citizen in the world knows exactly what ISIS is, but I do think we know who is funding them and who created ISIS. And for example, I think we put off the blame on the U.S. government when we say John McCain. John okay. McCain is a hypocrite because Obama is a hypocrite. The State Department right. is full of hypocrites. Obama mm -hmm. last year wanted to um, strike Syria, mm -hmm. attacking Bashar al-Assad, right. and to help, and they were funding the Syrian rebels. <clears throat> and now they right. want to attack them. They're mm -hmm. still funding them in Syria, yet they want to attack them in Syria, and they're already bombing them <laughs> in Iraq. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's just really just hypocrisy at its finest. Right, right. So you're basically saying it's the entire United States government and not just John. I mean, I definitely don't think, um, I don't know how much, you know, Congress knows, but I do definitely think the State Department, the CIA, the FBI, intelligence of the United States knows exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. CIA, Central Intelligence mm -hmm. Agency. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, when we look at this concept of ISIS in, in America as uh, people who are under an oppressive system. You can bring your mic a little bit harder. Yes, sir. I'm always be low ride. Well, I had to low ride, man. You know what I'm talking about? I believe it is a, a reflection of the environment in which they live. People want freedom. People want to be able to express themselves, their culture, their ideology. And when you're living under oppression like we're living in America, okay. you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to meet that oppression with a political agenda, mm -hmm. which we know even uh, when we looked in Iran, when the group won the popular vote, they were... Uh, what was the name of that, that group? I can't even remember the now. The Green Revolution? Yes. Uh, it, they, they, the, after they won, America never even accepted them. They never accepted the fact that they had won the popular vote. Oh, just like Hamas. Hamas. That's who I was referring oh, that's to. That's Palestine. Yeah. So that's Palestine. Thank you. So oh, okay. the point is... Uh, when I mean, how are you a Palestinian? You don't know that. Well, I get it mixed up. There's so much war and turmoil and right. killing. I don't know how you have it. Killing over here. They're killing just over all there. Muslims. Here, killing yeah. there, killing there. <laughs> so uh, ISIS is a microcosm of people all around fighting against oppression. But this is the caveat that they haven't really spoken of. They have found American citizens when they kill a combatants of the ISIS. Yes. It's either one or two things. They found American citizens that have defected to the ISIS Absolutely. agenda and philosophy, or Americans are the one who are ISIS, 
mm. and have created this same well, scenario like 9-11. Well, I wanted to say that ISIS isn't necessarily mm. only made up of people from Iraq and Syria. Mm. There are people coming from Chechnya, Jordan. from Europe. You mm. have Jordan, England. Right. Saudi right. Arabia, England. Right. And you have teenage Muslim boys. And yes. obviously we know ISIS does not represent Islam whatsoever. Whatever their agenda is to kill Christians. I mean, these reports must be true that right. these Christians are being killed or that these Muslims in Iraq and Syria are being killed. So you do have these people carrying out these orders regardless of whoever started ISIS or created ISIS or is at the head of ISIS. It's a problem and they are terrorists. You, you, you made a very interesting point. I'm going to ask you a very serious, sensitive question. Of course. Okay. You said that ISIS does not represent Islam. Yeah. And I thought it was very strange when they were about to behead James Foley, not once did Allah was mentioned that there was supposed yeah. to be an Islamic state. Yeah, definitely. I'm a little, I'm not a Muslim, yeah. but I'm a little confused <laughs> because most of the, yeah. the eight you millimeter go, yeah. headings I've seen. Mm -hmm. You get a clip by, you're going to get a yeah, survey. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're they going to tell you why they're doing it. They actually yeah. track the Amazon mm -hmm. orders of two teenage boys in Britain who um, went to join ISIS mm -hmm. and they tracked their Amazon orders and they had actually ordered um, Quran for dummies. Mm -hmm. Like these are men that haven't even read the Quran they mm -hmm. have to get for dummies. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. The yeah. 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 like they're just like just summarizing yeah. for me, you know, like wow. I'm not that concerned. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's just Absolutely. What they, one of the things that I think one of the things that happened, and this is one of the you know especially when you talk about uh, uh, being a, you know being a Muslim over here, one of the things that you have to thank the Creator for, especially for the Muslims over here, is the ability to uh, um, have. It's hard. Let me see. How do you put it in words? Like to read and basically study on your own. A lot of them are, in my opinion, and 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 the Creator knows best. Uh, it are misguided by a lot of the shiuk, a lot of the sheikhs, a lot of the uh, early ma, what they call the scholars and stuff like that, because the people are giving them the interpretations mm -hmm. of the Quran. So a lot of those people are, and a lot of times they are well-meaning mm -hmm. brothers and sisters yeah, who are getting caught up into the getting caught up into the fray of things, mm -hmm. getting caught up into behind a lot of the politics. Mm -hmm. We understand that it's just like we understand that America has to have a boogeyman. Yes. In oh. order to take our civil liberties and do the things yeah. they do. First, it was the communists. Yes. It was the Cold War. And then after communism, after the wall in Berlin and all this stuff wrote down, then it was war on terror, uh, war on uh, drugs. Right. That's right. You know what That's I'm saying? Right. And even though the CIA was bringing in cocaine to fund the Iran-Contra thing. Wait a minute. Thank you. Thank you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Start doing no thank you. Wait, yeah, they was bringing Ricky, Ricky Freeway Ross. That's it. You know what I'm saying? In L.A. Wait, you know? I thought it was gang bangers. Yeah, that's, that's what they like. Like you thought you think, yeah, right. Yeah, right. So yeah. they were flooding L.A. with the dope and taking mm -hmm. their money and then funding the Contra rebels. Mm -hmm. Right. With the, so the whole, I saw it was this whole war on drugs thing. Right. Then after all of that was exposed, now you got the war on terror. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Now you got the the anti the anti is the Islamophobe and Muslims have been over here for I don't know eons and ages yeah, over right, America right, right. doing that thing. You know what I'm saying? But so they always America always has to have this boogeyman. Absolutely, definitely. And the, it, it, oh it, no, that was it. Finish. Oh, and going off of that, America always has to have a boogeyman. Like I was speaking um, of last year, 2013 August, the chemical weapons attacks against the Syrian oh, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obama yeah. said he's going to um, he's going to strike Syria mm -hmm. against Bashar al-Assad, like mm -hmm. I was speaking um, about earlier. And then that didn't work. Congress mm -hmm. said no. The American mm -hmm. people were very upset. They did right. not want war on Syria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they take a break for about a year and then now it's like, okay, we changed our minds. Right. Obama actually came out and thanked Bashar al-Assad for protecting right. the Christian people of Syria. Mm -hmm. And he was your enemy, or he is your enemy, mm -hmm. or is he not your enemy? <laughs> you know, it, it, it makes absolutely so no sense. And the people you're funding, mm -hmm. which is ISIS, ISIS, you now want to bomb, and you're already mm -hmm. bombing them. It is absolute just hypocrisy over and over and over. He says one thing, funds something else. Wait, it's, it's let me say this right here, Black, because... Quick question. Yes. Yes. Gideon, I'm just gonna come to you anyway. Yes. Now, Miriam just said that, you know, Obama, is basically turn, turning his back on Bashar al-Assad. Right. Didn't he shake hands with Hugo Chavez? Yes, he did, sir. Didn't he shake hands with Gaddafi? Yes, he did, sir. So It was the shake of death. <laughs> he didn't have that. We know the result. Right. See, this, let me just first to say, okay, I'm so yeah. honored to be in this esteemed <laughs> assembly because it was in the arena that we first began to talk about 
the ISIS group and the ISIS crisis. Mm -hmm. And after that, the local media and the international media picked it up because of you, Black Sun, and your international perspective. Well, because of y'all? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, y'all heard it in place. The most high, he's got time. You know what I mean? But this is the issue now. As ISIS crisis continues and we begin to observe what we see in the society at large, it's a call to action. But well, wait, 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 Gideon. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm hearing, like, double talk here. You, okay, go you're ahead. Getting, you're, you're talking biblical right now. Exactly. <laughs> ICE is good or bad in your eyes? Good. Good. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Shut the front door. Good. <laughs> and what I said by that. I was hearing something. Go ahead, all right. ISIS is good because they are fighting for what they believe in and to try to establish a barrier between oppression and tyranny so that they can establish their own concept, oh, maybe a oppression and tyranny. I, <laughs> hold on. ISIS Go ahead. is only good for the United States and its exactly. allies. Exactly. Right, for decades, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. and the West has wanted to destabilize Iraq mm -hmm. and Syria mm -hmm. and in, Iran? Exactly, mm -hmm. in Iran and in that's Middle exactly East. what uh, mm -hmm. okay. ISIS is doing. Right. They have destabilized that entire region. Okay. Okay. And so that is the only good I see coming from ISIS is that they're benefacting the, the people that oh. they claim to be helping. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> enemy right. Wait, number one. See the psychology here. Okay. Yeah. Please see, show me the psychology. You know, just like John McCain went over there and he knew that these people were theocratic, fundamentalist right. fanatics. Yes. And Gideon is too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> true. But I, I wish they were even mm -hmm. fundamentalists. They're not. Okay, there is right, absolutely okay. no backing for what they're doing. Mm. For killing Muslims, for killing Christians, for in, uh, killing innocent civilians. That's not fundamentalism. That's just. It, Genocide. It, that's just ignorance and extremism. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, they're it extreme when extreme. they're ignorant. Mm -hmm. but, okay. that's exactly but let me say that. this. Okay. See, what this does, and you actually have to bring the biblical concept in there. Syria, Lebanon, all of these, when you talk about Iran, Iraq, all these places are biblically, biblical in nature. Right, and, and John McCain they hold the this. history of the Hebrews as well as the ancient Muslims and our people. So does John McCain know this also? Gideon? John McCain knows this. Does the CIA see, know this? They do know this. Does Barack Obama know this? They know it, and they're trying to destroy. And what you talk about, the destabilization of this area is all bringing about what the creator calls in biblical terms Armageddon. Because they have to destroy the nations that have supported the natural order of things. These countries have not submitted to the total industrialization, the destruction of Capitalism. the family, capitalist agenda, whoa, wait and a minute. Whoa, subdugation. Whoa, whoa. Stop the presses. Yes, sir. First of all, when they beheaded James Foley, it was done in HD. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, we need to discuss that. And number two, yeah, let's discuss yeah, that. And then, yeah, do, do, yeah. I want the camera to get a, a close shot of these lapels. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you look at the video with James Foley before he was beheaded, he had a lapel right here. Mm. I've never seen an execution video with a person with a lapel in HD. I'm just right. saying yeah. capitalism, Gideon. Right, even, even their use of Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. They yeah. have threatened mm -hmm. the people that run Twitter because Twitter keeps snatching down the, their accounts for the, some of the stuff that they're propaganda and stuff that they post. Wow. And so they've threatened the people. They've threatened to kill them and their families. If they, they who if they now the, the people that's running Twitter, Twitter. who run the Twitter accounts, who's threatening them? ISIS is oh, threatening okay. the Twitter ISIS. people because they keep taking down their propaganda in, their, okay. in some oh. of their videos. Oh. So that's really upsetting ISIS, and so they mm. threaten them. Oh, that sounds well, like Anonymous like, here in Atlanta. Hey, you know, the group Anonymous is supposed to be right. some type of no, subversive no, underground. No, right. no getting you about to get the gavel here. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Our point in saying that is for them to be so anti-capitalist and all of that, they're, they're using, using an awful lot of the technology. It's all sensestuous. <laughs> this, this is CIA. This is... Uh, but capitalism, capitalism, well but capitalism, capitalism doesn't equal technology, and 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 Western, you know, that's the first thing okay, we got to uh, understand. That. And Western, and a lot of times when they say in Western eyes, they're talking about the immorality mm -hmm. and the unethical yes. practice of the West. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The lewdness and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I think that it'll be pretty arrogant of us over here to say, you know, capitalism equals uh, equals technology or modernity mm -hmm. or things of that nature. In fact, capitalism are keeping people. You look at Iran; they won't even let them do the nuclear thing for energy. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of this capital, a lot of this capitalism and imperialism, mm -hmm. capitalism graduated to an international scale mm -hmm. as imperialism. A lot of imperialism are keeping people from modernity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're scared to allow people to live a, a life of equality, mm -hmm. especially even on weapons forms. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To have a deterrent against their oppressive ways. So a lot of times when they say Western, it's not against uh, technology. It's not against, you know, uh, uh, things that modernity and medicines and stuff like that. It's against the immorality that but the West... I think it's a combination. But Twitter, but Twitter is a Western product. Absolutely. That was my point. Like, Which yeah. it means they it's control a product it. that was born here. And not only that, gentlemen, you know, I'm thinking if this is an Islamic state, yes. why does the executioner is speaking English and why is he the only one there? Where, where's, like, the one guy with the... And well, one of, one of the things is that when you're looking at, and I hate to come on because I'm not the Islamic spirit, but when you're looking at a call, and I don't know about the ISIS thing, that's so why I'm sitting here really listening. A lot of there's a lot of things that when you get into a lot of the religion, it's it, to me there's fine lines between it. Sure, you know okay. what I'm saying. But a lot of things is what has happened with ISIS, and a lot of that's so why I say a lot of well-intentioned people are getting caught up. A call to jihad has been made. Right. Okay. And so when you have well-intentioned people who answer the call to jihad, Islam transcends national origins, Islam transcends race, Islam transcends ethnicity. Mm -hmm. So you will, you can find a Brit speaking Muslim mm -hmm. that is just as uh, uh, dedicated and devoted to Islam as the Arab. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As anyone. So he doesn't have to speak Arabic and be the Arab, this and that. Okay. That's, this is one of the things that's anti-Islamic and anti-Arab. Right. You know what I'm saying? To say, you know, so when you get, you'll find a lot of the fighters and a lot of people won't be from a lot of Arab. In fact, um, the the out of the largest Islamic uh, uh, population is Indonesia. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying. So it's not even the Arab people. Okay. You know what I'm saying. They have just been the people whom uh, Allah has chosen to send Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, through those people. Okay. But other than that, you'll find a lot of people around the world that practice Islam and not Arab yeah. people. So when the call to jihad is made, you have a lot of well-intentioned people who are just adhering to this call of jihad, trying to fulfill a duty mm -hmm. that is one of the duties. Uh, uh, upon the Muslims. So that's why I say you have to look at, we really go back to who's funding and this and that, but there are a lot of well-intentioned people caught up, but we can't get caught up because you got a Brit speaking or this and that. Yeah. So it's it's It's, it's crazy. a lot of brainwashed young yeah. men. Absolutely. That's what it is. They take advantage. I mean, not just ISIS. Al Qaeda did it before them. Right. They take advantage of men from poor areas. His right. parents, for example, were killed by U.S. soldiers. Right. Nobody hates America more than this boy, and he has right. the right to resist. But Al Qaeda and ISIS aren't true resistance organizations because right. they're killing their own people. Right. They're right. killing right. Muslims, and you know. Even on Arab TV, they'll bring people that are part of ISIS and they'll say, what's going on? What are you doing? Because they're hated, you know, by like I would say the average civilian in the Arab world because they're, they're horrible people what they're doing. And they'll say, why aren't you fighting Israel? Why aren't you fighting mm -hmm. America? Why are y'all mm -hmm. killing Muslim people? There's actu sense. absolutely no backing for that from an ethical perspective, from uh, an Islamic perspective, from, you know, just a, a humane perspective. You don't kill your own people. If you're so against Israel, like they claim to be, and you're so right. against the United States, then fight against them. Mm -hmm. But wait, wait, Miriam. Do, do, I mean, I'm going to just use Christians as an example here no, in no. America, okay? You know, you got... Um, the Ku Klux Klan, they're Christians. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you got black Christians. Mm -hmm. And then you got uh, white people who came to the South who helped black people in the whole civil rights thing. And Abolitionists. So is it the ideology that they're being killed for? Maybe they did, they're not accepting our brand of Islam. You're, you're saying in um, Iraq and yeah. Syria, oh, well, definitely, you will have Shias right, Sunnis, who are being right. targeted, of course, but they'll also kill Sunnis. They have car bombs. They bomb cafes. If you bomb cafes, if you have car bombs, you don't care who's yeah, being killed. You, you just want chaos. You just right. want terror. Right. Exactly. So these people, it, it, to be, they're as far away from Islam and humanity as you can get. If you are placing, you know, bombs in civilian areas and cafes and schools and restaurants, you just want, like you said, destabilization. Right. They're yeah. benefiting the United States and Israel because that's exactly right. what the U.S. The image and Israel that they want. Want to no, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to the point that you said earlier that uh, ISIS is not Islam. Yeah, of course. Um, there was a senior employee of the Dutch Justice Ministry uh, named Yasmina Hafi. 
Uh, and she claims that ISIS has nothing to do with Islam. Mm -hmm. It's part of a plan by Zionists who are deliberately yeah. trying to blacken Islam's name. Definitely. Why well, got, well, got black in the name? Why got black in the name? Why got black in the name? Why got black in the name? Who are trying to tarnish Islam's name? Okay, there you go. How do you feel about that? Well, actually, if you read back to, you know, the founders of Zionism, when they talked about a Jewish state, when they spoke about Israel, a Zionist state, it didn't encompass what was the occupation of Palestine. It's also Jordan. It's also Lebanon. It's also part of Syria. It's a big part of the Middle East that Jewish people, Zionist Jewish people, say that they have the right to. They have the right to live right. there. So, you know, when you read a lot of these things, when you destabilize the Middle East, and what we're seeing now is like World War III is going to happen. Obama had a speech the other day that he's now going to strike Syria. And yeah. he's already yeah. and he's yeah. already bombing in Iraq. Like, this is going to cause absolute chaos. It gives Israel the opportunity to take advantage of these Arab nations right. and possibly All in right. the future expand their territory. Right. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to make it make real good in here. Gang, we gonna make it real. We gonna get Talk real to gangster him. here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about Boko Haram. Yeah. Yes. Now yeah. you know, brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing we do when we get a little money, we like to get some nice, nice yeah. shoes on. Yeah. Us. Mm -hmm. But why is it they barely got shoes? And they, they got a right. ten thousand yeah. dollar pocket watch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You right, know, exactly. so, right. you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned More that. HD equipment to shoot right, video exactly. with. I mean, right. who, who's yeah. the video production or right. sound right. engineer? Right. Right. Uh, right. You know what I mean? It's absolutely right. ridiculous. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it goes back to what, like Mariam is saying, you know, and, and that's why I say it's a touchy issue, especially for it's that bit more, again, that anti-Islamophobe. You know, that, that, that definitely doesn't represent Islam. In, in any way, shape, or form or fashion. In fact, even going in and killing other Christians, that's mm -hmm. what, when you go in, they're called the Habis. And what the Habi does is that they allow, that they go in and they pay a tax, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to the state. They pay, if you're living under Islamic rule, according to the Prophet Alayhi Salaam, that you, they will pay a tax, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for, for that. And the tax really actually is because you're enjoying the pleasures of the state, you're enjoying the protection of the state. And what if you don't pay the tax there? Then what happens if you don't pay taxes here? You, get <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What happens if you don't pay tax? I mean, you're enjoying, you're enjoying, you're enjoying the, you're enjoying the protection. You're enjoying the Islamic army's protection. protection. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if like you're a Christian, you're living in Islamic land, you you have to be. A I mean, they could easily say, oh, they're doing that because we're Christian. But I mean, you have an army that has to be funded. You have food, you have roads that have to be maintained, you well, have, in turn, you know. Exactly. That's and look at how many Islamic empires there have been. They could have easily ethnically cleansed Clint, the Christian right. population, right. but they did the opposite. They protected them. Well, right. Let me say this, okay. though, Black, because when we look at the issue of having to kill your own, and when we look in the Hebrew community and when we look at war in general, mm -hmm. there are those who are collaborators with the oppressor. Absolutely. And Absolutely. they are people that look just like me and you and the family We members. call them bootlicking Uncle Tom's right Absolutely. Now. And there is a, they are saturated within the community and culture of the people that are being oppressed. When the time comes when there has to make a decision between who you are with, many of our own people are going to be killed because they have voted for, supported these killers, America, and tried to give substance to mm -hmm. it to make this evil, wicked system straighten itself, which its own, by its own philosophy and creed, is based on keeping a permanent underclass. You definitely have a point with executing traitors. I think, you know, most people would definitely say that there's justification for that. But car bombs, putting bombs in restaurants and cafes, are, are those people traitors? Well, you know, as, a, as a warrior from a Palestinian community, as I am a Palestinian myself, war is war. And there is no but uh, they're making war. It's not war. war. Why do you keep calling yourself a Palestinian, man? <laughs> because I am. You are a Christian. I am. Man, you are you a Negroid in America, I brother. Am. <laughs> <laughs> you're African here in America, but I won't knock that. If you're a Palestinian, man, I just—I mean, that's just yes. something that just gets me, man. We want to be everybody but us, brother. I right. am. Uh, that is us. See, we don't know who we are. That's why we're called Negroes, Colors, Black, African Americans, Jigaboo. So, Kool, what about Jigaboo. the brothers that say that we Kemites and that we are? Well, but we don't want to get off the. You're talking about ancient <laughs> ancestral <laughs> kingdoms, and we are the archetype of humanity. You, so, when you look at the original, listen here. Uh, uh, listen here. Go ahead, sir. You are an American. Uh oh, you are an American. I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> I'm glad in a home I'm free. No, 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 listen, Where's listen. Mickey Mouse? <laughs> listen, Gideon. Come on, you man. You are American, and you read the Bible. 
Yes. It don't get no more American than that. Woo, Lord have mercy. <laughs> it don't get no more Well, American. it prophesied its own destruction then. I mean, you know. Yeah, Jeremiah 50, baby. Okay. Let okay, me, go ahead. You know. <laughs> let me say this. Okay, we, we, we're getting the ties to the money. We're talking about destabilization. So, didn't you say, Vince, that they wanted to destabilize Iran? Now, I know John McCain yeah. been beating the war drum against Russia yeah. and Iran for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah Iran uh, basically believes that ISIS is, is an American plot to destabilize their country mm. and, the, and the rest of the Middle East. Of course. Uh, Iran oh. also put out on its state television photos of McCain right. with ISIS mm. uh, to further <laughs> mm. uh, bolster their point um, yes. that... Uh, Incestuous that, relationship. Right, yeah. that ISIS is in an <laughs> incestuous relationship with Senator John McCain. Yes. Um, but I think there's a general consensus uh, in the Arab world that ISIS is some sort of American, Israeli no, uh, okay. tool. plot tool to, <laughs> to destabilize this region. Yes. Um, right, because because I, the, the article I read was called, Who's Pulling the Strings? The US. Right. Oh, it's Turkey, Saudi Arabia, no. right. Syria. Oh, boots on the ground, America. We're going right. into Syria and we Iran, wherever ISIS is. That's where we're going because you created it. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that's the endless war act. Absolutely. Mm. First time it's being implemented. Come on. Mm. For all you religious folks out there, mm -hmm. Obama has it implemented endless war act. Okay. Yes. Give us some background on that again. Endless war act basically declares because it's a long article, but I, as an atheist, it caught my eyes. I say, anybody that declares any type of threat a theocratic government, mm -hmm. that means the Islamic State. Right. That means... He breaks Israel, state. Right, right. Anybody <laughs> right. declare any type of religious government right. is right. a threat to a democracy. Absolutely. And we can go in any country and mm -hmm. kill you. Yes. We drone you. We can go yes. anywhere. There's no such thing as sovereignty. We're on the hunt for these zealots. Right. That is the end of the war act in, in a Basically, nutshell. In a nutshell, mm -hmm. right. So if you say, you know, we want to, you know, form a nation under the Bible or under the Quran, we can kill you. It's, and that's, isn't that what they're doing? Yes. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Uh, oh, well. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. no, I was going to say that America's definitely having a hard time this time around because you had something like 9-11 that brought Americans together, and they were like, kill them, kill them. You know, <laughs> yes, they were like, yes, like, yes, when, they, when they were bombing Baghdad, mm -hmm. Americans right. were cheering bomb, all, bomb, all, bomb, all bomb, the bomb, five Iraqis yeah. who were being killed. Right. But this time around, you know, Americans, they're not very ecstatic about going to war again. Mm -hmm. So America has mm -hmm. refused to put boots on the ground. They're telling Jordan, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia to send their soldiers. And they have said no way. Actually, Turkey and Germany have said that they're going to have no part in this operation. Really? Well, did you not hear that Obama said there were 500 soldiers already on the ground in Syria? Oh, no, uh, I didn't. No, I didn't hear that. But I did Gideon. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I heard the report, and he did, Obama just did a report on the crisis, ISIS crisis, and he said there were boots on the ground. He, there were a uh, contingent of 500 soldiers that had been sent In to Syria. Syria. Wow. Right. Well, you and he said wherever old. ISIS, the threat of ISIS was that they were going to send That's soldiers. Right. And they said and even if that means Iran. And he called them out. Mm. So, oh, well, 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 Joe Biden said we're going to trace them to the gates of hell. That's it. Miriam, do you know why the American public is not backing, going back into Iraq and Syria? The first time we went over into Iraq, do you know that the Bush administration stated that it shouldn't take any more than five months to cleanse, yeah. mm. stabilize, mm. implement democracy <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in Iraq, and then we would be done and out of there. And we were basically there from what, 2003, 2003. to 2011, yeah. basically, when we left. Um, I was and, 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 yeah. and, and they didn't leave. I mean, they left their right. mark. Yeah. Well, we so called left, left technically. Yeah. But um, so that's one of the reasons why now the American public public is kind of like, ah, we really yeah. shouldn't be over there right. yeah. again. You know, um, and and I think that's very valid um, to this argument because I think people are starting to wake up to the fact that 
our government lies to us sometimes. Oh, what? <laughs> oh no. Wait a minute. Golly. Wait, that our you government will lie to us to meet their end game. Wait a yeah. minute. Go. I, I object. You've got to prove that. <laughs> well, show me where these weapons of mass destruction are that we uh -oh, that uh -oh. initiated us going into you Iraq. Mean you mean you ain't forgot that yet, we man? We still ain't found that, so I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. if you can show me these weapons, then my, I'll take my argument off the table. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, uh, but <laughs> for the American people, please do not go by under this cloud of false that right. your American government will not lie to you and does not lie to you. Yeah. This, they know better. This, this country was built on by lies. criminals. Yes. 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 And, 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 and has been a criminal institution ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So this is why we got to regulate the internet. <laughs> you, got, you got to, right. You got, you got to regulate the internet. And especially, and, especially so, and especially so for Africans here in America, I hope to God that you don't believe that the so-called, because when we say we, I get a disclaimer. We say right. we because we speak in general. But right. you know, as Africans here in America, we know this government doesn't love us, doesn't accept us, and doesn't really want us. We got a but black president there. Yeah, hello? That's about the extent of it. We got a black puppet. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. You, yeah. you got it. We got Eric Holder. You got it. You got it. No, you got You got You got You got You have an, you have an African American. Now, I'm going you know to see if this seems panel remembers this. And I talked about Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral, the uh, shuttle craft, mm -hmm. and you know they show. Do you know they have a list of all the astronauts except two? And do you know who the two they have missing? Don't they tell me the, the the Africans in America, the black uh, John McNair uh, and uh, uh, what's the, the sister's name? Do anyone remember who the female? Sister? The sister's name was. Uh, that, uh, man, what was that? Yeah, bitch, you should man. know. You're the teacher. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him the yeah. gavel. You gotta give him the gavel. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but see, not only have we forgotten, right? The people at the IMAX at uh, Cape Canaveral have forgotten because they have all the pictures of the white astronauts mm -hmm. and the two of us that tried to go into space and lost their lives are not even shown. Mm. And we don't. And now we've forgotten even the sister's name. If somebody Probably could call in and name. give us that name, please. Uh, Young call in, give us yeah, the sister's name. Yeah, but uh, anyway, that's what happened when you let people write your history. They will write you out of history. They will write you out. They will write you out of history. They will write you out of history. This, uh, and about, I remember when that happened. Yes. Let me ask y'all this about ISIS. Um, because when we left Iraq in 2011, mm -hmm. so-called left, mm -hmm. um, we knew ISIS was there. We knew ISIS. Was there, we knew they were forming, we knew, we knew they were growing mm -hmm. in numbers. Wow, okay. So, why did the U.S. not handle that problem then? Well, let me answer that question for you, and then I'm going to defer to the rest of the um, panel. Wasn't ISIS formerly known as the Syrian rebels? Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And weren't correct. they known as moderate Muslims fighting for the cause of freedom? They evolved, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. they evolved. I'm just, I'm just, you know. mm -hmm. They evolved mm -hmm. when uh, With some help. America came over there and left their footprint. <laughs> equipment. All over, all over equipment. Uh, like right, right. Money, um, weapons, and the training. Is it's all theories because nobody knows what's happening on the ground. I mean, you, you try to do research on this. You try to look it up. And it, even news articles, you'll be reading it. And it's just implied that they have no idea what they're talking about. Mm. Because nobody knows what is happening. Who are the Syrian rebels? Who is ISIS? Who started it? Right. Who's the leader? It's unknown. Well, I thought, uh, this is John McCain. I thought Obama <laughs> he knows. said that he wanted to arm the current Syrian rebels yeah. to right. fight ISIS. ISIS. So my yeah. question is, once he arms the current <laughs> civil <laughs> they will end up Syrian becoming rebels. ISIS. And if they do <laughs> defeat ISIS, What's going to happen then when they get upset with America and say, now we are going to start running this territory or right. we're going to turn our back on you, America, yeah. regardless of the weapons, the training, and the help you've given us, who's to stop them from doing that? This seems to be a cycle. Oh, yeah, like exactly like what it is. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Al Qaeda, oh, thank you. Oh, this seems to be right. a cycle that uh, the United States government seems to get into where we arm a certain group of people to help them fight another group of people. Yeah. And then when that first group of people that we arm uh -huh. gains victory, right. we all of a sudden become the enemy. Uh, not, let me ask this okay, question. All right. As we see this cycle, and we are intelligent observers of this cycle in the society at large, what do you think the society can do against the oligarchy who gets paid by creating world war from the armament and the destabilization? What would you say 
we need to do. Doing what we're doing now, exposing yeah, this, I you know, and I mean, being straight up like, you know, like, let me, let me ask you a question, because I know how the devil thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know how they think. So let me ask you this question, Mary, and I've asked you this question before, and you've answered it before, but I'm going to ask you again, and I'm going to ask you too, Yanga, as Muslims. Mm -hmm. Should we have a Muslim state? Um, I definitely think so, if it would be followed by true Islam. Most definitely. Could Miriam on the, uh, in this war after it? <laughs> <laughs> on the list. <laughs> You're on the list. Yeah. yeah. True Islam. Hey, that was a set of black stuff. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah>. Or <laughs> is that anything like I guess he's just sat with me. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why you wanted to get me in trouble. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. no, no. no. I'm, trying to, I, I'm trying to educate yeah. Gideon yes. many times mm -hmm. about this whole, you know, we, we, gonna, it's. But did you hear I what she wanna, said? Yeah. She said, true Islam. And then I asked right. her you about democracy. I said, we do not have a democracy in this country. And they said, well, you're right. But we want a true democracy. What does that mean? Exactly. And I mean true it, democracy is black nationalism. I'll debate anybody on that. J. Edgar Hoover is, is documented. Because we as African people I come out of West Africa. We were the first people to have councils. We didn't have no centralized government. And so J. Edgar Hoover knew that. That's why he had put Marcus Garvey on the list. He put Malcolm X on the list. Right. Khalid Mohammed. I can go yes. down the list. He would be yes. Newton because they were talking about a decentralized government. Right. You know, they didn't, like Yang has said many times, they didn't attack the Panthers because of their guns. No. They attacked them because of their ideology. Yes. Right. You yes. know what I'm saying? And they knew exactly. that they were the only ones that could point out on paper, Gideon, mm -hmm. not a belief right. that they're not practicing a true democracy. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as okay. African people, though, for me as African people, and even coming as a Muslim, but especially African people over here in America, I don't know if, in fact, I know that an Islamic state for African people here in America wouldn't be, the, wouldn't be in our best interest. Mm. One of the reasons is because we don't have an identity of who we are. Mm. You know, for us that accept Islam over here, not only do we accept the tenements of Islam and the teachings of Islam, but we also accept the culture of another people. Exactly. You, we start to dress like we start to dress like other people. We start to take on other people's dietary habits. We start to uh, do call her. Let's go on into the. Uh -uh. Well, they're gonna turn the audio sure, up sure. in the studio. They did, they did. Okay. Give them to go ahead and talk. Yeah, yeah. You okay. On, you on Hello. Call her. Go ahead and talk. Carla, you're live on the arena. She said hello. Hello. Go ahead. And the first black what, queen? What is... Astronaut. Oh, the first black astronaut. What was it, what? Maybe. Jim Jim yes, yes. yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you yes. so much, May yes. Jensen. Yes. That's so good. That's right on. Yeah, write said, that down. Mamie. I remember that. May. May. May Jensen. May Jensen. Oh, now you remember the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go. No, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go back to the point, and I'll be brief in the, in the point that I think that, and I think that that has harmed us, and with any religion that has harmed us. Right. Like Maddie made a good point. She said, "True Islam." I think that the Palestinians have convert have have Islam that accepts their culture. They have put their way of culture. They have been doing it so long that it's been beneficial and it edifies them as a people. Mm -hmm. The Saudis, mm -hmm. you know, like we said one time, the person told me about Hajj. He said, "You go to Hajj, the Saudis, the Saudis where they have their thoves. The Palestinians, the Yemenis have their different dress." Right. He said, "How do you tell the American because the American has the Yemeni turban, the Saudi thobe, <laughs> the uh, 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 Sudanese sandals?" Right. So we don't have, and the African right. here in America hasn't developed, hasn't understood Islam from the point that it has been beneficial to his culture. When we look at that, if, and if we had him, then you wouldn't have the, the masjid on 14th Street, the big beautiful masjid where our Arab brothers and sisters go to, and then you go in the hood, and we got, I ain't even going to say the hood, but right there in the West End, you got Imam Jamil Abdullah Alameen's community, right. full of Africans, uh, Africans here in America, mm -hmm. Muslims. So until we start to understand the economic benefit of Islam, the social benefit and the cultural benefit, directed to us specifically as a people, then I think that we should be careful about accepting any way and letting people govern us any way that don't reflect uh, what we come from specifically. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, we have to go out of our communities to get books. You look at my library, I got, you know, and I hate to even holler some of the sheikhs that I have, but, you know, I used to be what they call, and this is in sort of Wahhabi, but Sheikh, one of my favorite sheikhs, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab. 
know what I'm saying, a profound, 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 what they call purist or profound Salafi uh, uh, in the understanding. Um, and, and, and a lot of uh, the Salafiyun that I read and our predecessors who came before pure Islam, but it's hard to find when coming, really coming to find those uh, people of African descent that come to us and are specifically addressing African culture and how we can still embrace our culture and still be us and accept Islam, we haven't had those real outstanding proponents. We haven't had those real outstanding spokesmen. So until that comes up, agree. yeah, so until that comes up, we have those people that say, hey, look, this is Islam. You don't have to do this or do that. You can still be this and that, but just stay away from the things that God has said is haram, is forbidden, the things that uh, the Prophet Salam, has warned you about. Stay away from those. Then you start to look into building this in, in a strong Islamic state that's representing yourself. But until then, we do it with the Christians, with the Hebrews, and everybody, man. We just take on other cultures. Well, see, but that's why, you know, when they developed uh, the Senate, which John McCain was a part of, when they developed uh, the Endless War Act, they were talking about true Islam mm -hmm. and whatever it is. They were talking mm -hmm. about all of it. Yeah, all of it. yeah. they don't make a distinction. Right, they don't make a distinction. Yeah. So, you know, I think we get caught up. Not only Palestinians, but black people. We always try to say, well, you know, it, it's true. Or is it, and, and the American government don't care to, like, man, put her on the right. list. Yeah, but they you, don't care about uh, me, she yeah, 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 exactly. Right. It exactly. doesn't matter. Do, do, away with, do, do away with it all, you know, right. because they, they're right. fascists here. Right. But one of the things, true. exactly. But yeah. that's what we have to be careful with, you know, when we call true, our true Hebrews, like what Gideon said one time, you have those gangsters, exactly. religious gangsters. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like I said, I belong to a set that they believe the sisters should wear the niqab and then this and that. And I had one brother go so far, I say, look, man, I'm make my wife wear one eye hole. You know no what I'm saying? Way. Yes. He said, he goes, wow. She's going to have one eye hole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then he goes to the, and then he, you know, and use, and he use the Quran to, so, and to, yeah. because the Quran is like Oppression. this, man, that it is, the Quran is a high, it's living, mm -hmm. it's ever evolving. You know what I'm saying? You can go into the Quran, you can find your problems there addressed to this day and time. Exactly. So then you have to have a people who are devout to God and devout to the way of the messenger, who have pure hearts that go in there and will look for solutions to today's problems and not be those people too, that you find the ISIS's. Now, uh, now let me ask you, because if we don't have a pure democracy, and we know we don't, mm -hmm. what is it? It's um, a hypocrisy. A Thank you. A lie. A lie. Exactly what it is. Even if it was a true democracy, it doesn't make a difference considering the people are brainwashed. Yeah. If you right. have a brainwashed right. majority that Populous. advocates for something or yes. a population that votes for something, it doesn't make a difference because they're going to be voting for something wrong and something that doesn't benefit mm -hmm. them right. because they don't understand that they're oppressed. Okay, exactly. well, let me, let me add to that. This is where black, Dang, this, where, whoa, <laughs> hold on, hold on. this is where black nationalism c comes in. Okay. Because when you look at it, it's a book called The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our system was transparent. That's okay. the difference between us and the Europeans. Sure. We had a transparent system. Mm -hmm. So if we all come to the table, it's just like, I, like, I always like to use Egypt as a fine example. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people, the minorities that they call Christians and the women and other groups are saying, no, we don't want Sharia law in our government. So how do you well, understand? Well, here's one of the reasons we don't have is like what Medium goes back into with the true democracy. The problem with a, a democracy over here is capitalism. Thank you. Individualism. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? When you have a true democracy and the people are voting for what's in the best interest of the common people, the common good, people over here vote for what's in the best interest of themselves. Thank right. you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So they exactly. get with their collective groups and everybody, when you have this classism, Change. you have the rich right. uh, yeah, getting are, together are, are and are saying... Are the masses being suppressed? Because, I mean, you had yeah. Thrasher come over here with that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yes, there's Your buddy, Gideon, yes, talking about, brothers. oh, well, convicted felons can't vote. Yeah, yeah, you know the masses. The masses, the masses, the the masses, the masses are, right, the masses are being suppressed. But it's like, it goes back to a little bit like what Maniam said, is that the misinformation, when what you're saying right. is out there, and what our more uh, aspirations are, hmm. our ethics, you know what I'm saying, our ethics are misguided. So it's the things that we vote, it's the things that even are being put out there to vote on. Hmm. Some things shouldn't even be yeah. brought up to a damn vote. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. things are just wrong okay. because exactly. they're wrong. Definitely. Well, what it does, it shows the difference between the, the warrior and the mercenary. Yeah. See, America has produced mercenaries. What is the yes. difference between a warrior and a mercenary? A warrior has principles. principles. Yes. He has uh, uh, honor. Mm -hmm. He has a respect for 
the purpose in which he is warring, he's not warring for himself, mm -hmm. he's warring for a greater cause. Right. The mercenary on opposite end exactly. is, Man, that is, is good... about himself. Yeah. Yeah. He, as long as he gets paid, he'll kill you, his mm -hmm. mama, oh, the yeah. dog, yeah, yeah, all yeah, yeah, the children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. America has produced heartless, non-caring mercenaries. If they have killed our own children mm -hmm. over here, what do they care about the but world? Definitely, about the there is no yeah. principle. If you speak to mm -hmm. U.S. soldiers in America, they'll say, we're against war, we're against the government. Everything, Miriam, that you're saying is completely right, but I'm still going to do it. Exactly. Yeah, 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 I'm still going to do it because I'm getting paid and I can't do anything. So I, th I think that that's been a problem. <laughs> yeah, I think that capitalism... It's sad. It's sad. You right. know when they say, I agree with you, but, but I'm not going to do I'm getting anything. paid. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's yeah. my job. Yeah, it's, hey, my, it's my job. It's my job. That's what you hear about the police, you know. Boy, it's my job. It's not personal, brother. It's right now. Wait a minute. The state trooper that was beating the woman. It's talking about, I was helping her. I was helping her. I was helping her get out of the But that's what happens. Just doing my job. So what ends up happening, though, over here is, Capitalism gets is is always they use democracy synonymous with capitalism. Right. And they're two different, different things. things. Exactly. Gideon, yeah. and that's right. and that's what we have to understand. If you're not careful, people will slip that on you. You be talking about democracy, then they're slipping capitalism yeah. and imperialism. You're like, oh, but we're not all even of us about associated that. with the West, which is. You know anything outside of America? Is, democracy is, is be associated wrong. with the West? You're saying? Yeah, democracy yeah, and uh, capitalism. Oh, yeah. Well, cap yeah. capitalism yeah. definitely, capitalism definitely, but 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 they the West tries to claim democracy. Democracy right. has right. 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 What yeah. is true democracy? Right. They yeah. socialism. No, Gideon, that is a economic <laughs> structure. Right. structure. Right. Democracy is a council. It's no centralized. Like, see, I know you reading the Bible, you're not going to understand this. <laughs> but let, I'm, I'm going to use the biblical language. When okay. Jesus picked 12 men. Yahshua. Right. Uh -huh. and now, now, instead of them keep going to Jesus or Yahshua for mm -hmm. they were all making decisions. That's the that's truth. Right. That's right. That, that's that's right. What, be, what democracy would be. Well, that's you know, what socialism making, is. No, no. Why is socialism a bad Social word? Is a, no, no, Why no, is no, communism no, no. a bad word? Aren't so we in a commune no, no, right no. now? No, no, you, you, you're, you're right. However, oh, thank some, you. Oh, no, 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 no. But, but you can have a democratic socialist. Socialist, or you have democratic. Look at that. can't hardly say it. It's like okay, no, 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 no. He's, 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 he's basically trying to explain to you that there's a difference. You, it would be the same I, I, I as understand. them using capitalism and democracy synonymous. Right. Socialism. If, if socialism and democracy was the same thing, you wouldn't have democratic socialists. That's right. There's a, there, you, there got, you know, you know what the difference is? Socialist. They have two different oligarchy power yeah. well, sets that's within. The difference is, is the struggling economic, for the resources. They're economic, they're economic structures. One is, go. governmental, is, a, one is governmental structure. Like you got cap, democracy goes falls under governmental structures like democracies, theocracies, dictatorships. Certainly. Then you got economic structures like capitalism, socialism, communism, okay. and things exactly. of that nature. So there's there, there are two different things. Uh -huh. apples so and it's oranges. apples and oranges, Thank right? You. So what the the but West one governs the other, does it not? No. No, not necessarily. They, it's it's how you can put. You can have like Hitler was a social nationalist. But he was a dictator. He was a dictator. Right? Democratic. Democratic. Theocracy so, is a dictatorship. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're against. That's why we're against theocracies. Well, you know, not, in the sense. No, not, no, not, not, no. not. You're right. But no, I actually wanted to piggyback off of something. Oh you no, were no baby saying. backs, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You were speaking about. Um, would you agree with an Islamic state? And we were talking about democracy in the United States. The difference is you were saying you have so many different factions here in the United States and you have lobbies. You have, for example, the NRA. Mm -hmm. You know, you want people to have these gun rights and to be able to bear arms and everything. Mm -hmm. Then you have groups who are completely against that. So then when one uh, emerges victorious, the other group has nothing, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. If you're a minority in America, you're not protected as the majority is protected, as the white man is prote exactly. protected. The difference is with an Islamic state, Christians are most likely going to be a minority. But even as a minority, they're going to be protected. Just because you aren't necessarily um, the majority of the populace, Mary. you're still protected and you're still respected as you were a Muslim. Mary, yeah. we're, we're going to close out the show with this yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The homosexual be protected? <laughs> with that being said, we'll see y'all next week. Wait a minute, I thought we got five minutes. Yeah, wait a minute. Don't be trying to get me now. I want to know. I want to make this last point about ISIS. Okay. Uh, because they're, the not crisis. Just, they're just not putting America on guard anymore. They've sent a threat to Russia and Vladimir Putin. Oh. I, don't know, I don't know if y'all heard about they that. That was, on, that was on September 3rd. 
they basically did a, a video uh, from a Russian uh, fighter aircraft, and this is what they said to Putin. These are your aircraft that you sent to Bashar, and with the help of Allah, we will send them back to you. Mm. Um, and with the permission from Allah, we will liberate Chechnya, which is a mainly, yeah, a mainly Muslim area of mm. South Russia. Your throne is shaking. It mm. is in danger and will collapse when we get to you. We mm. are on the way with Allah's permission. Mm. So they just, they like, we don't care who you are. Yeah. And they're, they're, ma they're mainly coming at Putin because of his association with Basad. Yeah. Right. He's been backing Basad, and, right. and, and ISIS feels like if it wasn't for Putin, they would have been overthrown. Yeah, and yeah, Chechnya, because so Chechnya. many ISIS yeah, they fighters tried, and yeah. Syrian rebels are from Chechnya. And see, that's the thing. When you just read that, that was a great statement. You know what I mean? Because Vladimir Putin is a murderer, and Russia yeah. is, you know, it's an imperialist power yeah, right. that wants to extend its claws, you know, in the world, just like the United States. So exactly. when these children, when these young men see that, they're like, you know what? They're right, but they don't realize what they're getting into is actually something bad, just like the right. United States, just like Russia. Right. ISIS brainwashes people. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything good at you? I mean, if we set up as Black Nationals and want to yeah. take over, Black then Nationals we bad. Yeah. Yeah. You right, take yeah. over, the yeah. atheists take over, we know we're going to have to take y'all out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, y'all, I was joking. Yeah. I was just joking. Yeah. But I mean, hey, at the end of the day, take out Mo Brown. At the end of the day, right. <laughs> take out McCain. <laughs> oh, we, they going out yeah. first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. At the end of the day, what is good? Is anything good? Revolutionary Black Nationalism. <laughs> right now, for white African people in America, because what it does, it transcends your theology. It transcends all that. It says that black power is defined as what is in best interest of African people here in America. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when we start to direct, when we lose our division, stop being divided upon our theological beliefs and our philosophical beliefs, and we start to get to come together based on what is in our best interest, then we'll start to really be able to compete on not just the uh, national scale, but an international scale. You mean scale. like in the arena? Like in and, and, and let me say this, and, and, and you know, you talk about black nationalists, and I want to quote my man Jerry. When black people come up, we all come. Up. We yeah, all. There you go. There you go. Don't right. barbecue. Exactly. Right. 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 Black people be like, oh, they right. racist. Right. You know? yeah. yeah. We all come up. Same for Palestinians too. Yeah. Same show, right? Stop the war. Stop the fighting. At the end of the day, you either gonna be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, the most yeah. high gonna spew you out his mouth. There you go. Peace, we he always got in. I'm peaceful. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, we still in though. Yeah. Uh, we ain't yeah. out yet. Yeah. 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 yeah, we yeah. still in there. Oh, so got one minute. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. Just say, you know, uh, out, man. Uh, man, like we said, we take it out. Like my man said, you know. Uh, fight those who fight you. There you go. Look, That's like, it. Fight they, those who fight you. They need to do something about. ISIS because they're talking about collapsing Putin's throne. They're talking mm. about raising the flag in the White House. We out. Who is they? Yeah, who is they? Yeah. ISIS. But who needs to do something about ISIS? The people who Sounds like anti yeah. Islam <laughs> phone to me. I think they got bits. I think they got one. You know, they got coalition, whoever it is, they you know, the coalition of the not, people's agenda. Yeah. They're not uh they're not stopping. They're not slowing down. Well, they're not stopping. They're not going to stop because, like I said, man, you got sincere.